The LBR file format was the most common form of multi-file archive on personal computers at one time. It was created by Gary P. Novoselsky in 1982 for his use by his uh, LU program. And he also mentions benefits such as making it easier to download and distribute related files on RCPM systems, as well as making better use of disk space and directory structure. And, uh, well, LBR reigned supreme until it was displaced by the ARC file format on MS-DOS and uh, later CPM, which combined compressing member files with including them into an archive in a single process, whereas the LBR files didn't specify a form of compression, it was purely putting multiple files into an archive, although often they would be compressed beforehand. In this video I want to show a little bit about the history of LBR and also show some useful utilities to work with them. The earliest definition of the file format I can find is ludef1.doc, so we'll have a look at that here. and. Uh, And here it is. So it dated 4th of November 1982, and it says it replaces the previous document, ludef.doc, which is dated 31st of October 1982. So uh, Gary P. Novoselsky addresses all L users. And, uh, and, and here it is. So this definition is quite brief compared to the later definitions. So it goes through, explains how it's organized, the directory format and what have you. And um, a couple of interesting things. The member files have to be included using whole 128 byte sectors and hence file size was measured by the number of 128 byte sectors. And the other interesting thing is that thankfully Gary had the foresight to reserve 16 bytes per entry for future use. This was particularly important because it later allowed better interoperability with units, MS stars, etc., where files weren't made up to uh, weren't made up of 128 byte sector files, and hence a number of pad bytes could be specified. The uh, the last revision of this document is LU. Uh, ludef5.doc, which we can see here is dated 19th of August 1984. Uh, this version adds quite a few interesting things. It adds, uh, if we go down here a little bit, so it adds CRC checks, uh, which are handy, uh, creation dates, last change dates, creation times, and the pad count I was mentioning to allow it to uh, work better with MS-DOS and Unix and what have you. The first program I want to show is LU. So this is the program that started it all. And uh, this is version 1.1, uh, dated 4th of August 1982. And it allows you to add list, delete, extract, etc. its member files. And with, as with all of Gary's LBR-related programs, it's written in BDSC, which meant that they were relatively big compared to, uh, let's have a look at the file size of it, 18K. So relatively big compared to other later programs written in assembly language by other, pro, uh, other people. However, this did allow the use of BDSC pipes, and, uh, and to a certain extent it's irrelevant because it meant that he got the ball rolling, he got it up, and he created a really good uh, archive format. This is the earliest version I found, version 1.1. And it doesn't come with any um, any built-in help. So there's not an awful lot I can show you here. I can show you how to use it. So if I do lu show lu 101lbr dash l dash e lu d z c. So we can use it either interactively or on the command line. So here I'm using it on the command line, and this is going to open the archive lu 101lbr. It's going to list it. So dash L to list it, dash O to open, by the way, and dash E, extract a file. So we're going to extract lu.dzc. And there we are. So we've listed it. And then if we have a look now, we can see that there's lu.dzc. Now, this is still compressed, as you can see. Now, if I use a utility like LT31, that will actually let me view compressed files. So it's not a problem. But otherwise, I'd have to decompress it to view it. Uh, later on, LU got, became uh, cleverer. If I erase that file, lu.dzc, and we look at the later, latest version of LU, uh, which is LU310, and now we've got a help. So there we are. Uh, we've got a few extra things that it can do. The latest version version has this built-in help, it has some other features, but it doesn't fully support the dates as defined by ludef5.doc, which is interesting that he released a definition but then didn't implement them in the latest version of LU. Unless possibly there's a later version of LU which I haven't come across, but uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you see it, do let me know in the comments. 
So this time I'll do exactly what I did before, but I'll do it interactively. So I'll open lu101.lbr. Then we could list it. If I want to extract a file, lu.dzc. Now I've extracted it. I bring the help up again and then dash x to exit. Uh, the documentation for LU is worth looking at because uh, it contains some interesting discussions as to why to use LU files. If I show that now, there we are. So uh, here we are, why use these libraries? So it talks about it taking up less space than the total of individual members that went into it and also talks about how uh, disk space is allocated on the disk, so it explains why that is, and uh, and also about how it can make more efficient use of the CPM disk directory. Uh, those are all interesting things, but I think the most useful thing is the fact that it allowed us to collect a number of files together and then distribute them easily as one package. And, um, and that, above all, I would say, is the best reason to use, LU, uh, use LBR files. The next utility I want to show is LSuite. So it started from the command line, and then we supply it with a LBR file that we want to look at. Uh, so we could either give a single one, or we could put multiple ones on there, or we can use uh, a workout. So in this case, I'll look, at, I'll look at all the LBR files. So there we are. So now we're looking at ldir211.lbr, and this is uh, much like sweep. So it goes through in a circular list, and then we can extract or view members of it. One particularly handy feature of LSuite is that it will, uh, it will automatically unsqueeze members when extracting or viewing files. So here we are, we've got ldir.mqg, and uh, if I view that, even though it's compressed with squeeze, we can tell that because the middle uh, letter of the extension is Q. And there we are, we've got a message about LDIR. Uh, about LDIR. There we are, we can look through that, and now we're back on that circular list, so we can go through them. And then, uh, if we want to go to the next archive, then we just press X, and then we're on to lt31.lbr. Now, I can't view these files because these are compressed using LHA, hence the, uh, the Y as the middle initial. Uh, but we'll go to the next one, and these are compressed using Crunch, so it can't view those either. But Squeeze was an incredibly common uh, compression format. So it is very useful, or at least it was very useful. It's been superseded now, uh, mainly by Nulu. Uh, Nulu combines the functionality of LU, so Nulu, uh, and, uh, and it combines the LSuite functionality, as well as some other things. So if we look at uh, Nulu, we can see that Nulu, uh, version 1.52a, this is, uh, released in 1987, is uh, 16K, whereas LSuite 13 on its own is 16K, and LU, uh, well, it's version 3.10, was 20K. So Nulu is smaller than either of those files on their own, and yet it combines all their functionality and does more. If we start it, it uses a very similar format to the LU command, because after all it is a new version of LU, but by Martin Murray, who uh, originally wrote it, and then it was uh, later adapted by others. I think this version is uh, Mick Waters. Oh yes, it says there, Mick Waters uh, provided bug fixes for this version. If we look at the help, we can see we've got a much more extensive help, because we've got a lot more commands that we can do. And if I go back to the directory, and if I open a file, I look at ldir211.lbr, and then look at the member files of that, and I want to look at one particular file. If I view it, so if I view L dear, and there we are. So even this, even though this file is squeezed, it automatically unsqueezes it, and squeezes it and allows us to view it, and that's very handy. And then we could extract it and do the other things that LU does. Ultimately, Nulu replaced LU and LSuite because it provides all of its functionality and does more besides. I mentioned that Nulu combines the functionality of LSuite, and I'll show the uh, file suite version of it. So if I open a file, uh, LU10, and then switch to file suite mode, and then there we are just like our sweep. And then we've got the various commands that we can perform on the files within the archive. 
As I'm talking about Nulu, I should probably show create an LBR archive. The process is very similar whether we use LU or whether we use Nulu, but I'll show it with Nulu because it's the latest, uh, latest common program. So first of all, I need something to contain in there. I'd like some doc files. So if I use, if I open LU101.LBR, and then if I do a member listing, and if I extract ludef1.dzc Right, okay, so I've got two doc files now. Well, one's a, a crunched version, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'll start it again, Nulu. It didn't have to come out of the program, but it's probably a little bit easier just because I want to show how to do it interact so how to do it from the command line rather than interactively. So I'm going to create my pro my library, my yes, my library called ludefs.lbr and I'm going to add all the doc files, whether they're compressed or not. So then it starts up Nulu, we're back into interactive mode. Ask me how many entries. Well, I want two entries. And now uh, it's added them to the library. If I exit, if I exit, and then if we look at the LU defs file that we've got now, and there we are, it contains the two files that I mentioned. So we can look at LU def 5doc and that works, or LU def 1.dzc. And it, uh, this is QL, by the way. Uh, QL is a great utility. I'll talk about more about QL at the end of the uh, near the end of the video. But for the moment, that's Nulu shown. So Here's our ludefs.lbr.doc, so that's taking up 20k. Interestingly, we can compare that to the ludef1 and ludef5, which would have taken up 21k. So there we are, that's a saving straight away, if, uh, if we're interested in such things. One program that's often mentioned in relation to LBR files is DLBR. And DLBR works fine, all it does, it just extracts files from an archive. So if I use this on extract.lbr, and there we are, it's extracted the uh, the files. The reason I'm a little bit dismissive of it though is that whilst it's a nice utility it is 13k and that seems quite big for a program that literally just uh, extracts files from an LBR file. Uh, a much smaller program is extract uh, which I'll show here. So if I extract, if I delete the uh, extract dot d files and then if we do extract in fact, I'll show the command line actually. It's quite flexible with how it uh, how it works. So it allows you to put it into different users, uh, different areas, and it works really well because of that. Even though the program's only 4K, it also will extract uh, squeezed members. So it'll unsqueeze member files, sorry. So if I do extract, and I'll do extract.lbr, and I'll do all the files from it. Okay, so the file extract.com already exists, yes it does, and then you can see there that it's converted extract.dqc to extract.doc. And if I then view extract.doc, you can see that it's uh, uncompressed. So uh, yeah, nice little utility in just 4K, which is fantastic. Another small utility that I like is LT. Uh, so this is version 31. And I like it because it can extract and view files in an LBR archive, only 7K long. But the particularly interesting thing is that not only can it handle files that are compressed with squeeze and crunch, but it can also handle uh, LHA compressed files. So if I look through our LBR files and try and find one that's compressed with, um, uh, with LHA, and there we are, we can see near the middle of the screen, there's some files in the lt31.lbr archive. So if I look at one of those, Look at lt31.myc. So the Y in the middle of the extension indicates that it's an LHA compressed file, and then this allows us to view it. And then if I wanted to look at that same file, but this time I wanted to extract it, and I could just put that in front of it. Okay, well ordinarily it would have extracted if there was room. There isn't room, but that's okay. 
but it's quite a handy program and only a few k bigger than the extract program that I show. But then we gain uh, the ability to unsqueeze, uncrunch, and handle LHA compressed files. Because one of the motivations for creating LU was so that groups of files could be combined together and distributed easily, uh, particularly through RCPM systems, there grew other utilities to handle those better when using these RCPM systems. So, for example, LDIA here. Uh, so it's just LDIA. Uh, this is the one written by uh, Gary, uh, Gary Nofsileski. If I view a file... Here we are, and it displays the entries in it. In itself, this program isn't particularly interesting, but the reason I want to show it is that the actual archive for it contains an interesting file. So let's have a look at it. There. So this is the file I wanted to show. Now all of this, I should say, there's a, an accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website which contains lots of links to all these programs, some more information about them, some dates and sizes, whether they're 8080 or Z80 compatible, whether well, they're all Z80 compatible, but whether they're uh, 8080 compatible. And, uh, but this file is quite interesting. It talks near the, in the third paragraph about whether LPRs should be squeezed in their entirety before transmission or whether the individual member files should be squeezed. And he talks about there being different reasons to do either. Uh, as it turns out, the majority opinion has shown that it's better to squeeze the member files rather than the whole file. And as we look on the Warnock Creek CD, we'll see that the vast majority of LBR files there have their individual member files compressed rather than the whole archive. It makes it so much easier because you can just go in uh, so, for example, with this QL program, I'm in the LBR archive now. I can go and have a look. And I can look at the individual files. And, um, and I just wouldn't be able to do that if they were in compressed in their entirety. So it makes it much easier to use. It also allows us just to extract and download single files if we were on an RCPM system. So this was quite often used. There was a program called LModem, and it was useful to be able to extract single files because sometimes you might run out of uh, your allocated time on the system before the download completed. So if you could just download a single file, then you've got more chance of being able to receive the whole of that file before you timed out. Now these uh, LDIR programs continue to be useful. There's a program here I want to show uh, called uh, LDIR B. Uh, the reason I want to show it is that the format continued to expand, as I mentioned before, so it's continue to add the CRC checks and the date and time creations. So if I look using LDRB22, and if I look at, sorry, I've got to specify a file name. Uh, if we look at LDIA211.LBR, we can see that it shows whether they were squeezed, stored, uh, how they were compressed. Uh, now you notice that it doesn't understand the SYM file. It doesn't realize that that's an LHA compressed file. So we've just got the option of squeezed or stored. I think it'll also show compressed, uh, crunched files if they're crunched. In fact, let's see if we can find a file that's crunched. Uh, yes, there we are. So if I do There we are, and it shows that they're crunched. I think we haven't got any files here that have got a created or modified date, but LDIA can show them. So it's one utility that does make use of the later extension. Normally, I would use SD. That's my uh, directory program of choice. You've seen it me use it. You've seen my using it a few times here. It is. It's a great directory alternative. It. Uh, I've done. I've mentioned it before in previous videos. And other than QL, it's. The program I use most often for listing members of LBR archives. The program itself is uh, only 6K, as we can see. And then I can do things like if I do SD starter LBR, well, that would list all the LBR files. And if I did star.lbr $L, that would list the member files. But as you can see just underneath where I executed the command, it also lists all the LBR files themselves. So if I only wanted to list the members of those files, and I put the E after it, and there we are, I get that. Um, SD is really good, I can do things like SD starter LBR dollar LE, so just list the member files on all drives, so all users and all drives. 
and there we are so it's going through so it's looking on my D drive where I am and then it'll also carry on and look at my I drive and show me various files that I've got in LBRs there that can be really useful it'll also view uh, the members of ARC files as well so it's pretty flexible and, uh, and something I definitely recommend the last program I want to show is QL QL is one of my favorite programs on CPM it makes it fun it makes it really easy to uh, to list files in a directory and then enter LBR files to have a look around I can view the files go back so out of all the listing programs I've shown or the programs that can list files this is the only one that can go back uh, we've got the ability to find text in there using F so we could look up uh, I don't know um, our CPM and there we are and, uh, and it is it's great uh, it handles files that are squeezed or crunched uh, we can extract files with it so if I wanted to extract uh, ldir.mqg I would just switch over to the extract mode and now if I press 1 I've extracted to the disk and then if we look at the disk and there we are we've, we've got the uh, extracted file on the disk QL is let's have a look it's only uh, so QL41 uh, third column is only 10k in size the only thing that bugs me about it is that unfortunately requires a Z80 and that's really just down to my personal preference for 8080 well 8085 systems strictly speaking but uh, for most people that should be a non-issue uh, and it is it is it's a fantastic program i've featured it before in a video about text viewers on cpm definitely worth having a look at and it makes it great for when you're just going through these files and having a look into them and i've been able to view them easily well that's enough commands for one video I'm going to do a follow-up video uh, showing some other commands such as one that allows us to search all drives and all users for a matching file spec contained within, within uh, an LBR archive as well as how to mount LBR archives as a drive and also how to run commands directly from them so uh, that should be quite interesting for the moment hopefully you enjoyed this video I uh, do have a look at the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website and check out some of our other videos on the YouTube channel and uh, please subscribe.